Uh, of course, there was an even pointier weakness because the high altitude ones had even uh, a greater span weight. Which apparently Jeffrey Quill, as a test pilot, that he never liked. So he didn't really do anything for the handling of the aeroplane, and it certainly did nothing for the look. I'm 
which was universally known because of the hats. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting him a few times and you could not have met a nicer gentleman. He was the most self-effacing, modest, nice guy you could ever meet. He went strange because of uh, real conscience. And negation uh, one moment to a hero and then 15 seconds later you have the dumbest yeah, crossing in the world. But of course he flew up right until his last day. He was taken ill after landing at Popham. And then the other gentleman decided to go elsewhere. It was Raymond Baxter. Of course, Raymond Baxter transport command. In fact, I remember reading an article in one of the we don't mind, but we don't think the passengers are enjoying it. And then the world of media. Yes, yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't want 
fighter. This was a fighter, and it's interesting because it's a fighter that um, people like the Michael Lowe find something absolutely hated by Michael Lowe. Chuck Lowe, the last one, from the And uh, Bob Hoover loved, Hoover loved flying it. And many Russian pilots really were completely in love with the Yoda. And it's because it was very heavily armed, rather than the cannon firing through the centre of the propeller box, plus in this instance the B-09Q, another four half-inch machine guns, a great way to fire from the aeroplane. And also because the engine was down there behind, you know, over the midsection of the wing, it meant that you couldn't operate with a normal tail-wheel landing, so it was one of the first aircraft with the tricycle gear, uh, one of the early fighters with the tricycle gear. And again, going back to the Eric uh, Brown uh, segment, he actually landed one of these on a British carrier after the war. It was the last one we had in service. And again, he was an aeroplane, he liked, he had that as a hack. Uh, this is uh, 
my match. Watch, stop watch, that's it. You find the proper passenger and you land this soldier. This was developed out of the gauntlet, and of course it was the gauntlet that was replaced here in 1938 by the first spitfire. In the early years of aviation, or the first half of aviation history, names history, in World War II history, any of these particular aircraft survived that morning until the night came out. And then there was later a rescue by uh, Stephen Gray and the fighter collection and uh, the Superhead. Sometimes uh, histories are, are sweet and sore, and mostly sore, and this aircraft, if you could write, uh, probably would uh, write a sad story. They're coming in in front of us now. The Hawk, which is the forerunner of the P-40. Being flown today by Stuart Goldsmith, as ever was Stuart's flying which in fact was, was like uh, 50 miles slower than It was really a poor performer, even if it had been Pacific and a rat's white of virgin. Remember that aviation was not only about war. No, indeed. 
towards the downwind leg, reduce oh, the heat in the way you can just select down and inflate and flaps come down. Just a, a quick parish notice as we're waiting for the